Hi, I'm Bill. And I'm Anthony. And we're the Guru Meditation. Thanks for tuning in and checking out our follow-up to the composite video episode. And now we're going to show you how to hook the Amiga up to a modern flat panel television. Thanks for all the awesome comments about the composite video episode, guys. Inspired us to do this episode. One of the main things that people were saying was like, hey, you know, like, why even bother with the composite video out when you can just copy the animation files off to 1200, bring them over to a modern PC, and well, do a screen record? Like, why? They have a point. The best quality you're going to get is to get that actual file and find a way to play it on your PC. Exactly. But, you know, like, we like to explore, we like to experiment, we like to learn. Also, when you get a brand new Amiga 1200, it's not exactly brand new. I was just hoping that the machine would turn on. And once you get that machine running and you just want to get what you want off it as quick as possible, as you have no idea if the next time you turn that switch off, turn it on again, if that hard drive is even going to work. Exactly. Because in order to get the animation files or any file off this Amiga 1200, you can install a PC MCI-8, a compact flash card adapter, copy the files over onto this compact flash card, bring them over to the PC. Stay tuned for a future episode of the Guru Meditation. You can also do something like install network card, transfer them over to PC through your wireless network or wired network. Uh, also works well. Stay tuned for another episode of the Guru Meditation. But we want to keep it simple. Both of these methods require you to install software on this, plug hardware in, reboot the machine. You want that data for your friend off as quick as you can. Exactly, and that's what Composite Video gave us. But it inspired us to do this episode because the 1200 actually has three types of video output on the back. It's got RF, Composite, and it's also got Amiga RGB. Now RF is old school. We're talking your Atari 2600, the little box that you screwed onto the two antenna screws on the back of your television, you screwed your rabbit ears to that, you had a switch, computer and TV. Uh, you have a switch on the back of the computer to pick which channel. Channel 3, channel 4. Actually, the 1200 has got a switch on the back of it. It's got a channel 3 and a channel 4 switch. Yeah, this is really dirty. It takes audio over the same wire that it's taking the video over. It's actually uh, radio frequency, so like anything in the room that's transmitting radio frequency is going to show up on your screen. Your, your Wi-Fi router, your cell phone. Exactly. So the, lots of interference. Um, we can boot up an animation here to check out uh, how different colors look on it. But as I'm looking here um, at the screen, I can see the text isn't very clear. There's all sorts of like halation on the edges. It's kind of fuzzy, kind of hard to read, low resolution. The good news is most of the newer TVs don't even have this anymore. One of the advantages of having an old TV is you can get a crappy output out of your Amiga. <laughs> You know, let's step up our game a little bit. Let's check out the composite video out. Now, composite video uses basically the same wire, but it only transmits video over it, no audio. Looks a little better. Definitely looks a little better. And that radio interference, there's no radio interference in the gray area here, but um, definitely see some of the, the fuzziness around the edges of the text. And if you remember in our last episode, you saw that in the, uh, the edges of the snowman animation. Speaking of animations, let's load up another same Eric Schwartz video so we have something to, uh, to compare. See, some of us used composite with our original Amigas before we could afford 1084 monitors or 2002 monitors. Unfortunately, those monitors are dying at this point. We actually had a 2002 die at the Vintage Computer Festival East, unfortunately. The green gun went bad. But now the main thing is we don't own Amigas because we want to see less than top quality video. I want to see the best quality out of this bad boy. I want to see Amiga RGB up on the screen. It's a two-step process to get Amiga RGB up here. Step one, Amiga RGB cable to SCART. Now, SCART is a European standard, came out of France. It's a 21-pin connector that carries both RGB video and audio. Then once you go to SCART, how do you get it into your TV? If you have a TV with a SCART input, you're good to go. Of course, if you're in America, chances are you don't. But chances are, no matter where you are, you got HDMI in. And that's where this bad boy comes in. This is a SCART to HDMI converter. You can see it's got a SCART connector on one end, and HDMI output on the other end. Also has a few other cool features. It's got some audio outputs, because SCART also carries audio. Um, it's got a, um, 
a selector for PAL or NTSC. And that's important because you have Amigas that were sold over in Europe output the PAL standard that was common over there and you have the ones sold in America that were NTSC. So theoretically you could hook a PAL Amiga up to your flat panel even here in the States. Very convenient. It also has this button that will up res the video. So standard def video out of the Amiga getting up res to HD for your flat panel. It makes everything look a lot sharper and nicer. Well, time to see this in all its glory, right in the living room. Let's hook it up. Amiga RGB video out and the RCA audio cables because SCART also carries audio. SCART in on the converter box. HDMI output on the other side of the box. And the power. All right, box is all hooked up. Let's, uh, let's see what this output looks like. Let's do it. Wow, you see a difference immediately. The text is crisp, the lines are crisp. This looks, I would say, as good as an RGB monitor back in the day, your 1084, your 2002, but this looks better. You have no interlaced flicker, you have no scan lines on this. No, it looks really awesome. Uh, I'm very, very impressed and very happy. Let's check out the Eric Schwartz animation, see how it does with color. I just can't get over the text. It's so easy to read. There's no ghosting, no that halation. It, it's so much easier on the eye. Beautiful. Definitely looks great. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the cool things about this converter box is it's doing uh, some upscaling. So it's got different modes that it'll upscale to. And right now what it's doing is basically it's upscaling the Amiga's video as standard definition to a four by three ratio on the screen. Exactly, but it also has some other upscaling modes that will fill the full 16 by nine screen. Obviously the image is distorted because it's stretching it out from four to three to 16 by nine, but we can cycle through and see the different modes. There's, uh, it's upscaling to 1080p. Here it is in uh, 720p. Here it is in 800 by 600. 1024 by 768, 1280 by 1024. So it's got a lot of options for you to... Yeah. Uh, it basically has five options yeah. for your output to the monitor. Well, I'm really impressed with this little box. It's awesome. The quality is amazing. And you know what? For about 50 bucks, it's a really economical way to hook up your Amiga. And the cool thing is, because it's using the Amiga RGB out, it works with any Amiga. Uh, except the CD32. All right, wise guy, because it doesn't have an Amiga RGB out in the CD32. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, unlike other boards, for example, I have one here. This is an InDivision AGA Mark II board, which is actually an excellent little board that we're going to be installing in this 1200. Yeah. What these boards are, they're basically flicker fixers. And a lot of people with older Amigas will remember these. These are very specific. They're generally internal. They only work on one model. Exactly, and they're a lot more expensive than that little box. So the cool thing is, It'll allow you to run this 1200 at higher resolutions, but again, it's hundreds of dollars as opposed to $50 and only works with this 1200. Well, thanks so much guys for checking out this episode. Keep the comments coming, keep the questions coming. That's how this episode was generated. Thanks for all the positive feedback. And we'll see you on the next episode of The Guru Meditation.